Hey, what could you do starting today that would make a big difference in your life? Answer, no telling. What will some people do starting today? That's what's disappointing. It's not what we can do that's in question. What we can do is fantastic. What we can do is unbelievable. It's what we settle for that's disappointing. Remember, the major question to ask on the job is not, what are you getting? The major question to ask is, what are you becoming? What we become is what leads to all the good things. And the habits we form, habits of mind, attitude, and behavior, are a dominant part of what we are becoming. Now, I understand, as well as anyone, that forming new habits doesn't come easy. But new habits will come when we change. It is usually not in one cataclysmic explosion, but rather by changing small pieces and parts at a time. I think that's how most of us change. We just keep nudging ourselves in the right direction, forming one or two new habits at a time, little by little, until finally we've made the turn. And this is where the good life comes from, those personal changes. There's nothing you can do with the seasons, but there's everything you can do with yourself. Don't wish for the winters to change. Wish for your own attitudes, strength, and capabilities to change in order to handle the winters. Really making personal changes calls for 10% inspiration and 90% perspiration. Wishing we could change is a beginning, but now wish must be translated into activity and inspiration and affirmation must lead to discipline. We can affirm that we are going to change, but we must now form new habits and develop new disciplines for the affirmation to come true. We can look at developing ourselves spiritually, physically, and mentally. With respect to our spiritual development, this may be a major or a minor issue for you, depending on your values and your goals. I confess to being an amateur in this field, but I think it's very wise for you and me to look at the spiritual side of our lives and decide what growth we want to experience here. Come to your own decisions as to what it will take to nourish your spiritual nature. Next, let's look at physical development. The body and the mind work together and depend on each other, so they both need attention. There's a Bible phrase that says, treat your body like a temple. Treat your body like a temple, not a woodshed. Now, in taking care of the physical, we must learn to be conscious of ourselves, but not self-conscious. We need to be aware of our physical appearance, our physical well-being, but not to the point of being self-conscious. We need to be aware, we need to take care, but some people devote too much of their day to physical appearance. Physical appearance is going to have something to do with your future, your well-being, your income, so do spend some time on physical appearance. People look on the outside, and God looks on the inside. Now, you might believe that people shouldn't judge you by physical appearance. Well, let me give you a clue. They do. Make sure you don't order your life based on shoulds and shouldn'ts. You'll always be confused, and you'll always have trouble. The best thing to base your life on is reality. What people really do. So since people generally judge by appearance, then that's probably one thing we want to take care of. That's just part of the game. Now, of course, when people get to know you, or if they've been around you any length of time at all, they're going to judge you by more than appearance. But sure enough, people at first are going to take a look. So taking care of yourself in personal appearance is a consideration. Now, physical development also includes your good health and your well-being. You've got to spend some time on that so that you feel good in the marketplace. Get involved in some form of disciplined exercise. Keeping fit and feeling good has a positive effect on your attitude, not just your appearance. Even if you're not into sports, there are some cassette programs and books on how to stay in excellent shape in only 20 to 30 minutes a day. Get the tapes and find your best way to stay physically fit. Just develop a bit of consciousness about taking care of yourself physically. Physical fitness pays great dividends in terms of your energy level, your ability to live a long, healthy life, and your general sense of well-being. The other part of physical well-being is nutrition. There are some excellent books on this subject for you to investigate as well. Do all you can to stay fit, to stay healthy, and to stay well. 
because physical health and fitness affect how you feel about yourself and how you perform in the marketplace. When you feel good about yourself, other people will feel good about you too. Appearance, vigor, vitality, and well-being have a lot to do with how your life works out. That's the physical side. Now, the mental exercise and nourishment are just as important as physical and spiritual exercise and nourishment. You want to make sure that the acceleration of your mental health, mental well-being, and mental capacity keeps up with your physical capacity. So make sure at 40 that your mind has kept up with the passing of the years. Don't stay 30 at 40. Don't stay 30 at 50. Keep up the learning curve with mental exercises. It's so important for you and me to be stretched beyond where we are. It's too easy to just comfortably sit and stop growing. It often doesn't seem to be that necessary to make the push, to make the effort to learn and to grow and to challenge yourself. But let me give you something to think about. The last few years of the 20th century are going to demand a lot more mental vigor and mental activity. The competition and complications of life are going to truly challenge the full capacity of our mentality. So, stretch your mind. It's easy when you finally find yourself in a good job to stop pursuing mental development. Have you heard about the accelerated learning curve? From birth up until the time we are about 18, our learning curve is dramatic, and our capacity to learn during this period is just staggering. We learn a tremendous amount, very fast. We learn our language, our culture, our history, science, mathematics, everything. But guess when this learning curve starts to taper off? When we get our first job, usually. Now sometimes, for some people it will continue, but sure enough, here's where it usually levels off. If there are no more exams to take, if there's no demand to get out paper and pencil, why read any more books? Now you will just learn by some experience, just getting out there and by doing it wrong and doing it right and stumbling around. You learn some, but can you imagine what would happen if you kept an accelerated learning curve all the rest of your life? Can you imagine what you could learn to do, the skills you could develop, the capacities you could have? So here's what I'm asking you to do. Be that unusual person who keeps up his learning curve. Succeeding in life is not usual. It's unusual. You need to develop some unusual habits to earn the outstanding rewards. A friend of mine said, a standard education will get you standard results. You want a lot more than standard results? You need to become a lot more than a standard person. And now I've got some more good news for you. Never before in the history of the world has it been easier for someone like you or me to become educated, skilled, highly creative, innovative, and spilling over with profitable ways of thinking. You can turn your automobile into a professional growth seminar on wheels. I'm serious. Cassettes can turn the time you spend driving your car, dressing in the morning, or exercising into solid, effective personal development. While your friends are vegetating on the way to work, listening to the radio that doesn't help them one bit to do a better job, you're picking up new negotiating skills, better sales techniques, or a new creative way to solve problems. Become a student of good ideas, wherever they can be found. Start with all the things you can do to make your life better and make you feel better about yourself. Make a list. Life will give you some pretty big challenges if you can handle the small ones. But unless you practice on the small ones and master those, you don't have a chance for the major ones. A man strides out of his house to go straighten out the corporation, and he has not yet straightened out his garage. Who's kidding who? So work on all the disciplines that will improve the quality of your life. And here's an important thought. Everything affects everything else. Every lack of discipline affects every other discipline. Mistakenly, the man says, this is the only place I let down. See, that's not true. Every letdown affects the rest of your performance. Now here's the positive side. 
Every new discipline affects every other discipline. Every new thing you try affects the rest of your performance. Isn't that exciting? So get started on every small discipline you can think of. You can't believe what it will do for your self-confidence. And remember, the greatest deterrent to success is lack of self-confidence.